Hello all, welcome to the VoIP Traffic Analysis course on Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we are going to look at decrypting VoIP traffic and we will be looking at SIP plus SRTP and voicemail traffic. And this will be part one because I don't want this video to be very long. So we've divided it into two parts. Now in the last couple of videos, we have seen how to look at SIP and RTP traffic and recover uh, you know, the voice conversation. And we've also looked at SIP over TLS and RTP and learned how to make Wireshark or T-Shark smart enough that it can decode RTP traffic even in the absence of SIP packets or rather given that SIP was encrypted in the case of SIP over TLS. Now we look at SIP plus SRTP. So in this case, what happens is that SIP is not encrypted while RTP is encrypted and that is called SRTP or secure RTP. Now, during a lot of audits which I've done, uh, we've seen a lot of networks end up having this even in enterprises. This is because administrators wrongly end up thinking that because we protected RTP, which is really, you know, the juicy part where all the voice data is being carried, well, everything is safe, right? Why bother about SIP? And you'll see why this is not the case and why this is an extremely insecure configuration. So if you were setting up your own server to do all of this capture analysis, uh, what you'd end up doing is you'll make sure that the transport selected is UDP all zeros. Uh, media encryption has been set to SRTP and we have an option here via in SDP, right? And we'll get to what this is in just a bit. And on the client side, we go ahead and set encryption to be mandatory and transport to be UDP. Okay, the scenario remains the same. We have Bob, we have Alice, we have the asterisk server in between. But in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to analyze the voicemail call. The normal call to parties is something we'll do in later videos. So let's jump right in. Okay, so this time around, we'll actually go to the directory SIP SRTP. Now we have a bunch of files in here. I'd like to analyze the call to voicemail file. So I'm going to open this up in Wireshark. Going to search for SIP. Fantastic, I see that I have SIP packets in here. I'm going to search for RTP. And I see that RTP is there, but we have the annotation S before RTP, which is secure RTP. And if you notice, the uh, packet actually says that we have an SRTP encrypted payload, right, with some kind of a tag. Okay. So how do we go about decrypting SIP plus SRTP? Now, the important thing a lot of administrators end up forgetting is that how is this getting encrypted and how are the keys getting exchanged? Because let's take the simplest case of a voicemail. This is Bob, well, this is Vivek, but let's assume I'm Bob. And this is the asterisk server, right? And we have two streams between us, one from me to the server and the other from server back to me. So, if each of these streams are encrypted, then both parties need to have the encryption keys with each other, right? Now, this is really where what ends up happening in SIP plus SRTP is that these encryption keys are actually exchanged over SIP and inside the SDP section of SIP. So let's try and see what is happening here. So now let's actually look at the SIP flows. Let's click on telephony. But before that, I'm going to apply a filter for RTP or SIP. I'm going to click on telephony, SIP flows. I'm going to select all the flows, click on flow sequence. And I can clearly see there are two parties. One is Bob and the other is the server. So we see the register messages going there up on the top. 
And then after that, we see the invite SDP, which is where Bob is initiating the call. So let's actually look at these packets. Now, the one I'm interested in is after the authorization has been successfully given. And I can see this is an invite SDP from Bob to the server. Now, if you were to expand the packet, the message body, and look at the session description protocol, uh, most of it pretty much seems similar to what we've seen in previous videos. But in the case of SIP and SRTP, if you just scroll down a bit, you actually end up seeing this entire section here dedicated to crypto. And this is really where the encryption keys are actually being carried. <laughs> You'll have to believe this, right? These are the actual encryption keys. This is not re-encrypted using something else like a master key, nothing like that. This is the encryption key which is actually used for decryption. Now you can well imagine if SIP is not protected as in the case of SIP plus SRTP, uh, how big of a security threat this is. Now you actually see four of them. So what is happening is the client is actually telling the server that I can support all four of these encryption schemas. And this is really a combination of encryption plus you know, the hashing algorithm. So AES-256, CM, HMAC, SHA-180, the next one, or this, or this, or this, right? Now what happens is the server ends up selecting one of the algorithms and the server responds back with its own key. So keep in mind, as we said, for voicemail, there are two streams, one from Bob to the server. So what Bob is saying is, hey, my stream from me to the server, I can offer you these four encryption mechanisms and here is the key for each one of them, right? Now what the server does in its 200 OK SDP is the server replies back saying, okay, the mechanism that I'm selecting is actually AES CM 128 HMAC SHA-180. And by the way, here is the key for the stream from me to you. So this key, which we see over here in line L plus blah, 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 is actually the key uh, required to decrypt the stream from the server to Bob, okay? Now, once the server receives this, it actually sends back an update SDP message. And in this message, what the server does is it typically ends up mirroring the same encryption algorithm which the server selected, but it now only sends one key pertaining to that algorithm. So if we were to look at this AES-CM128-HMAC and then VIRG, uh, what you'd find is in the very first SDP message, here you go, this, the client had actually sent this to the server, right? But because the server ended up selecting this as the encryption mechanism, the client now is just sending back one key in the you know 200 OK, uh, just to basically go ahead and update, sorry, update SDP, telling the server that this is the key I'm using, right? So in this way, the client and the server end up exchanging keys required to decrypt each of the sessions. And this key is what is then used to encrypt the SRTP traffic. Now the SRTP traffic again is in two directions, one from the client to the server and the other from the server to the client. Each of these have a separate encryption key which was sent over SIP. Now, interestingly, if you wanted to also analyze this using T Shark or at least get to know about the streams, because uh, SIP is available in plain text, we don't need to do any decode or any of that stuff. We could pretty much just write T Shark dash R, call to voicemail, quiet mode, uh, and then after that, we want the summaries. So, if I remember, which was dash Z. RTP streams and if you see it automatically tells you there are two RTP streams one from the client to the server the other from the server to the client you can apply uh, you know this to pretty much any 
SIP plus SRTP PCAP trace file. So this is the normal call two parties, two, two callers, where we see there are four streams. And keep in mind, which means there will be four encryption keys. And then finally, we have the conference call three parties. And this will end up having six streams, which means there will be six encryption keys, right? Fantastic. So the key learning here is in SIP and R SRTP. SRTP, even though is encrypted and robust, because SIP is not protected, uh, and SIP within it uses SDP to carry the keys, an attacker can monitor and sniff the traffic and end up getting the encryption keys required to decrypt the VoIP data traffic. Uh, so this is what I had in mind for this video. In the next video, we'll actually jump in and, well, I could actually show you one more thing. That's why you should always go back and look at your slides. So you could actually go ahead, click on SIP flows, select all of these, click on play streams. And what you'd end up seeing is that Wireshark still ends up showing you something. The important thing to note is because this is encryption, all you're really getting here is noise. You can play this. If you manage to play it, all you would listen to is noise. I mean, it'll almost remind you if you've done SDR software refined radios, it'll kind of remind you of when you're going ahead and playing a signal. So the key thing to note is even though this shows like there is a signal, there is nothing. Uh, this is really just noise because of the encrypted data. Great, so this is what I had in mind for this video. Uh, in the next video, we will look at how to take these keys and decrypt the VoIP data traffic. Thank you and have a great day.